Okay, I'm going to talk about my long run, which I'm more than happy to talk about. This is something I did at the end of my career, and we'll, we'll get to that. But having the most seniority as far as age, and having been in banking for over 60 years, now none of you have uh, <laughs> that distinction, but um, you know, if you work for free, after you retire, you get to work longer. So uh, that was my magic formula. In any event, I am passionate about banking and about opportunities for women. So I have chosen a slightly different uh, title for my talk today. And the title is, if you're taking notes, How to Succeed in Business by Really Trying. <laughs> and I think that's kind of what I've uh, done my whole life. And, and, and it worked. So maybe we'll share a few secrets uh, about this. I, um, I wanted to stay on time, so I'm going to just start right in and say, one thing I don't like to hear about is women only make 78 cents for every dollar the men right make. Now, as many of you know, and I was a single mom for many years. Well, my kids were 11, 13, and 15 when their father passed away. But um, so, you know, I've, I've kind of been there. And many of you have chosen to take some time out of your career. And I think one thing we need to concentrate on is the positives. And let's start getting that more equal and more stay-at-home dads. And they will understand the problem even better. <laughs> so how do you get ahead in business by really trying? I would like to tell you about my little red wagon and uh, the uh, uh, sale of soda pop in about 1934 or 35. I was born in 30, the dark ages for many of you. <laughs> but I sold pop door to door, and my dad bought me the first case of 24 bottles for $1, and I sold each bottle for 10 cents. Now, that's a pretty good profit margin for a four or five year old. <laughs> All right, I mean, and that, maybe you're getting the idea. So my first important term uh, of advice is start early in your business career. All right, in third grade, I had an epiphany. And I can still remember the windows in Randolph School. And the teacher had asked a question. And I knew the answer, but I didn't put up my hand. And I said to myself, very brilliant of me in about the third grade, Alice, you've got to start putting up your hand. And I guess I did, and I've been doing it ever since. <laughs> and it's not all bad, particularly if you know the answer. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Otherwise, you really embarrass yourself. So take my advice with a note of caution. But it is very important to be prepared. And you know, I don't like the idea that it has happened to maybe more women than it should. They kind of have what I call a corral mentality about their work. And that means they operate within a fence. And they don't want to share. They don't delegate. How are you ever going to get ahead unless you delegate? I've always said, <clears throat> if, if you... Um, Excuse me. <clears throat> OK, getting old. Uh, I've had too much radiation on my throat. And my voice isn't always good. But uh, you'll excuse that because you're my friends. And I really <laughs> appreciate that. OK, well, the main thing is uh, you make the best of whatever happens. But uh, the, the corral mentality really doesn't get you anywhere, in my opinion. Um, so what did I do? Maybe some other things to get ahead. In sixth grade, uh, I was invited to, to be cashier in the lunch program. Lunch was 17 cents, and I got to take care of the money. I don't know how I got that job, but it was for free. They didn't even give me lunch. So I'd ride my bike home to save 17 cents. <clears throat> Am I giving you a little bit of an idea how early I started? OK, well, I was head of the finance committee in seventh grade. We had reels of movies uh, that you could, uh, students could go see for two cents. 
We were in the big money. Oh my gosh, I'm running out of time. All right, uh, number two, this is really important. So get out of your comfort zone. Don't stay where you're comfortable. Uh, when I came back in 1975 to head up uh, Cornhusker Bank, um, a, a family bank, but that bank was, you know, when we, I first started working there, you know, it was a half a million dollars. And now Cornhusker Bank is 450 million in total assets. I'm very proud of that, and it means we can help more people because we are a we care bank, and our motto is committed to your success. And that same motto is also in our employee break room because we care about their success. You can't expect employees to really do the best job possible unless they have that same desire to take care of customers. All right, um, one thing uh, you have to decide when you're given a task is just do it. Do all the steps you have to have in mind. And keep in mind that sometimes it's a disadvantage if you're born with a silver spoon in your mouth. Now, I've never seen a baby uh, with a silver spoon in its mouth, but I have heard about them, and it implies you get things not that you don't have to earn. You know? And so think of yourself as an autonomous person, and you can be whatever you want to be. And so that working hard and succeeding in business by really trying does work. OK, one more thing. In marketing, for example, it's a wonderful field. It's my daughter's major. But you have to do what works for you. If you don't have the capital to compete with someone in your field, think about what you can do better than what another bigger organization is doing. And that could be uh, community service. I, it's kind of embarrassing. The article in the paper, uh, that was very nice, you know. But also, if you think about it, it's free advertising for Cornhusker Bank <laughs> all these years later. So why not take advantage of it? And uh, I really appreciate having the opportunity to talk to you. I have started a loan fund, and I fortunately brought around some flyers telling you about it. it I committed a million dollars on the installment plan. If you can't write a check for that amount, you have to. And it's all paid for. And um, we have 50 or so loans outstanding now. They are for someone with entrepreneurial inclination. Uh, if you pay the $5,000, which is the maximum first loan, uh, off timely, you can go for $10,000. And it really is intended to give a start to uh, a new business. Uh, the main thing is, we, <laughs> where do we go on integrity? Well, we do not require collateral. What better commitment can you get from a banker uh, than saying, we admire your integrity? Integrity does pay loans. I've seen it happen. I've seen people pay loans that couldn't pay them. And I've seen people walk away from loans that they could have paid. And their neighbors don't like them very well. If they're driving a new car and they didn't tell it true, uh, maybe to the banker, maybe they didn't tell you all the facts. So with your banker, the more you tell them, the better your chances of success the better they have an opportunity to evaluate that secret magic formula of personal integrity. And one thing you must always remember is if you have opportunities, say, I can. Okay. <laughs>